Welcome back everyone. In this video, we are going to implement a basic React table. A basic table can be implemented in six simple steps. Step one, get the data you want to display in the table. This is a step that we have already completed by creating the mock data in the previous video. Step two, define the columns for your table. Step three, Use the data and columns defined to create a table instance using the React table library. Step four, define a basic table structure using plain HTML. Step five, use the table instance created in step three to bring life to the HTML defined in step four. For the sixth and final step, include the desired CSS for your table. Let's go back to VS Code and implement these six steps one by one. The first step is getting hold of the data that we want to display. We already have that in our mock data.json file in the components folder. For step two, we need to define the columns that we want to display in our table. So I'm going to create a new file in the components folder called columns.js. From this file, I'm going to export a constant called columns. This is going to be an array of objects. For our basic table, we are going to specify six columns. Each column is represented by an object in this array. The first column is going to be the ID column. The way we specify that is by adding a property called header and then assign a string value. So header colon and the string ID. The second column is to display the first name. So header first name. Similarly, third column is for last name. Fourth is for date of birth fifth column for country, and sixth for phone number. We have now defined the labels for each of the columns. However, we still need a way to associate each column with the rows of data. For that, we need to specify the accessor property for each column. If we take a look at our mock data, you can see that for each row, ID is specified using the string ID. So for our first column, we specify the string ID as the accessor. Similarly, in our mock data, first name is specified using the string first underscore name. So back in columns.js, for our second column, the accessor is first underscore name. The accessor for last name is last underscore name. For date of birth, it is date underscore of underscore birth. For country, it is country. And for phone number, it is phone. So what we have essentially done here is map each column to a specific data value in the mock data. This will help React table identify what data goes under which column in each row. Now there is one point I have to mention. Even though our mock data contains eight columns, email and age being the other two columns, I have intentionally not included them. This is simply to showcase that you can pick what data needs to be rendered in the UI. If a column is left out from this columns array, it won't make it into the UI. As simple as that. So that is our step two, defining the columns for our data table. Step three, we need to create a table instance. This is where we are going to make use of the React table library. In the components folder, create a new file called basic table.js. Within the file, use the snippet RAFC to create a function component. 
Now to create a new table component, we need to import three things. First is the use table hook from the React table package. Second is the mock JSON data that we have created. Third is the array of columns that we have just defined in columns.js. Let's utilize each one of these imports. First is the use table hook. Remember, a hook is simply a function, which means we call that function within our component. So use table. To the use table hook, we pass in an object as argument. On this object, we specify two properties, columns and rows. We can set columns to the imported array of columns and data equal to the imported JSON of mock data. However, there is a catch. The use table hook recommends that you memoize the rows and columns using use memo hook. So at the top, import use memo from React and then before the use table call, const columns is equal to use memo, an arrow function which returns the imported columns. The second argument is an empty dependency array. And similarly, const data is equal to use memo, again pass in an arrow function that returns mock data and we have an empty dependency array. Here, using the use memo hook ensures that the data isn't recreated on every render. If you were to not memoize columns and data, React Table would think that it is receiving new data on every render and attempt to recalculate a lot of logic every single time. This will definitely affect the component's performance. So, now that we have the memoized columns and data, we can pass them in as arguments into the use table hook. So columns is going to be equal to columns and data is going to be equal to data. This can be simplified to just columns and data because of ES6 shorthand syntax. All right, let's continue. Now the call to use table will return a table instance which we will store in a constant. Const table instance is equal to use table. So that is step three, creating a table instance. Step four, let's define a basic table structure using just HTML. So in the JSX, let's start with the table. A table will have the header and the body section. So T head and T body. T head for header and T body for body. Within both the sections, we need a TR tag to specify a row. So TR and TR. In the header, the data is wrapped with the TH tag and in the body, the data is wrapped with the td tag. Formatted, and that completes our step four. We now have our basic table structure. For step five, we need to use the table instance with our JSX to render all necessary UI. We begin by destructuring a couple of properties and methods from the table instance. get table props, get table body props, header groups, rows, and prepare row. These are basically functions and arrays that the use table hook from React Table package has given to us to enable easy table creation. We need to use all of these with our HTML for React Table to work as intended.
I just want to let you know that the code I'm about to write might not make much sense at first. So it's okay if you lose track of what is happening. I'm going to come back to this once we have the UI working. First, we have get table props. This is a function which needs to be destructured on the table tag. So curly braces, spread syntax, get table props, and this is a function. Similarly, we have get table body props, which we need to destructure on the T body tag. Next, we have header groups. This contains the column heading information, which belongs inside the T head tag of the table. Header groups is an array which requires us to use the map method to render the JSX for each header group, similar to how you would render a list of elements in any other components. So within the T head tag, curly braces, and then header groups dot map, which gives us access to the individual header group. And for each header group, we render the tr tag and on the tr tag we destructure header group dot get header group props then within each tr tag we are again going to have a pair of curly braces we then access header group dot headers and we use the map method on this list of headers this gives us access to each column. For each column, we return the th tag destructuring column dot get header props. And what we actually render to the UI is column dot render passing in the string header. So this is the header section. Next, we deal with the rows array that we have destructured. Rows go inside the tbody tag and the code is similar to rendering a list of elements. Curly braces and then rows.map. We get access to each row and within the function body, the first thing you have to do is call the prepare row function that we have destructured from the table instance. You pass in row as the argument. Then we need to return the tr tag. On the tr tag, we destructure row dot get row props, and then within the tr tag, curly braces again, and then row dot cells dot map. This gives us access to the individual row cell. We then return the TD tag, destructure cell.getCellProps, and within the TD tag, cell.render, we pass in the string cell. So that is the body section of the table. With that, we complete step five. The final step is to include some styling for our table component. Since I don't want to focus on CSS in this course, I'm simply going to copy some styles from W3Schools. So go to w3schools.com, click on learn CSS, go to CSS tables, click on try it yourself, and from here, copy the styles. So everything between the opening and closing style tag. Copy it back in VS Code in the components folder, create a new file called table.css, and then paste the styles. Now change all occurrences of hash customers to the word table. For the th tag, 
change text align from left to center. Include this file in basic table.js. So import dot slash table.css. With that, we have finally completed all six steps. Let's include basic table component in app.js and test this out in the browser. As you can see, we have our React table. At the top, we have the header in green and the different rows. We should have a total of 200 rows. In the header, you can see the header label for the six different columns. ID, first name, last name, date of birth, country, and phone number. Our table works as expected. Now, as promised, let's revisit the table components JSX to understand what each part of the code is responsible for. The first two destructured values from the table instance are something React table needs. So you mentioned get table props on the table tag and get table body props on the T body tag. Now let's talk about header groups. As the name indicates, header group can be a group of headers. In our example, we haven't grouped together any of the columns. So every column header belongs to its own separate group. We then access the headers under each group. For each header, we access each column. For each column, we render the header property. What is the header property? It corresponds to the property in the columns array. This is what gets rendered in the browser with the green background. The green color, of course, is from the CSS. Similarly, we have rows from the table instance. On each row, we access the cells, and with each cell, we call the render function passing in the string cell. What this does is for each column, picks the value from the mock data JSON for each row and then renders it in the browser. This is how the React table package by providing utilities simplifies creating tables in React. I understand this was a pretty long video, but trust me, once you understand how to implement a basic table, rest of the features will be easier to understand. One last thing I'm going to do is instead of destructuring from the table instance, I'm going to directly destructure from the use table call. And we can remove this extra statement. So that is your basic table with the React table package. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.